Good evening, Mr. Perfects. Welcome to TRH, the Reconnection Hour, here every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Hope we've all had a cracking week so far. I'm Terry, founder, CEO of Mr. Perfect. What is Mr. Perfect? Most of you will know by now, but we bring men together, usually, at barbecues to create communities and connection for the betterment of mental health and to reduce isolation. Um, obviously, we're not doing that physically at the moment, but I've uh, got a bit of an update on that shortly. We are doing online barbecues on Sunday, which has been a great hit, and we're doing uh, TRH on Thursday nights as well. So what's TRH? Well, we normally chat to health professionals, doctors, psychologists, um, some of our own barbecue hosts, and other people doing incredible things in the world of connection, mental health, men's mental health. Um, and it seems to have been a pretty good hit. We've had some incredible questions that have come out of it, some things I've learned out of it, um, and I think we will continue doing this weekly for the foreseeable. So, um, yeah, it's been cracking. Update on the week that's been for me and for Mr. Perfect. Just had our board meeting, first one we've had online over Zoom. Went really well. Um, lots of updates. Obviously, now they're more online-related than anything that's happening offline. And got a couple of exciting things going to happen very soon. Won't say too much. Maybe a couple of potential partnership updates as well. Um, I've also been speaking with the AMHF, Australian Men's Health Forum, which I'm sure I've mentioned a few times now. Great group that promote the work of men's health groups across the country. They're going to be doing, I think, a bit of an online event in June, which I'm hoping to be part of. Um, so stay tuned for more info on that as well. I've met some really cool people out of that as well, collaborating with some of the men's health groups. And um, I've now gone nine days without a beer. Um, I noticed my alcohol consumption was definitely going up, as I'm sure it has for a lot of people during COVID times. And um, the very last beer I had was actually, well, the guy who was responsible for it was the guy we are interviewing tonight. Um, it was from a company called Balta. Incredible XPA, which we've been thinking about far too much these last nine days. And um, they were a sponsor for an event called Conversations That Matter. That was a couple of weeks ago online by Blackpedia, which is run by Josh Kwambi. So I'm going to bring him in and here we go. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good to hear that I was responsible for your last beer. <laughs> I'm thinking about it far too much, far too much. <laughs> Ah, good. I I've never, I've never had that brand of beer before. So now it's just imprinted on my mind. And since I had it, since I got sent a couple of very nice ones after the uh, event, I'm just, I'm all over it. So uh, nine days without it, though, I'm going to try and go. I was going to attempt a, eh? but we'll see. I'm going to take it week by week at the moment. But um, no. yeah, good on you, mate. I think, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's. What did I say that? It, the amount that alcohol uh, consumption has gone up and, and beer sales, et cetera, is just phenomenal at the moment. And I, I have to say I am totally um, probably part of those that those <laughs> figures there contributing to it. I do enjoy a, a drop and I, I have, I think, exercise for me has gone down and alcohol consum consumption has gone yeah. up and the, and the man boobs are getting bigger. <laughs> uh, I was actually hoping that we'd kind of frame it this yeah. way. Or if I just slip a little bit lower, I can you in the corner if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, tell us about um, no, no, you're welcome, mate. Tell us about you probably want to hear about. Uh, we hear about Black Peter shortly, but tell us about you, uh, story, upbringing, how you got to this point. Yeah. Okay. I um, grew up in country New South Wales, um, down in a little town called Cootamundra, which is the birthplace of. Um, Sir Donald Bradman, actually, that's its claim to fame, along with the the, the Cootamundra Wattle, um, which is a famous song by um, John Williamson. But I, I grew up there in a, in a country town and, look, to be honest, had a really good um, upbringing there. You know, I, I had good friends, played a lot of sport, a um, lot, of, lot of soccer or football, as you know it, um, Terry. Um, loved it, um, but I guess... My parents uh, separated, like so many people, when I was a young fella. Um, and then when I was nine years old, and then when I was 15, uh, 15 and a bit, my um, my father passed away quite tragically in a, in a car accident. 
Uh, and that's been probably one of the, I guess, the reasons and probably the, the driving force for me starting um, Blokopedia many years down the track. But, um, yeah, so after leaving, we left Cootamundra not long after my father died and, and moved to, to Canberra, which I kind of would now call my hometown. Um, a lot of travel and work and whatnot in between, but now I live up in Brisbane with my lovely wife, Rebecca. Um, and, and, yeah, now still a New South Welshman at heart, so still support the Blues. Um, but, yeah, now called Queensland home. Amazing. And how did, um, how did Black Peter come about? Mate, it was, it was something that I'd never really, you know, if you, if you told me a few years ago that I'd, I'd be starting this organisation around men's health and, and well-being, I, I probably would have laughed at you. You know, I think back then, even you know, a few years ago, I didn't have the the healthiest lifestyle. I wasn't in the happiest of places, to be honest, either. Um, but got got chatting to a friend of mine at the time who was a um, a blogger and realised that women were had so many platforms to engage in and to talk about you know motherhood and their relationships and work and all these fantastic ways of engaging with each other which i thought was fantastic but i kind of said there's nothing really for for women to uh, for men to um to engage with outside of the sports and you know cars and all that kind of i guess uh superficial stuff so i said wouldn't it be great if there was something, a, a blog site that guys could talk to each other about all this stuff outside, you know, this, the, the stuff that matters, the conversations that matter. Um, and, and so this idea for Blokepedia came about and I guess that led me um, to, to where I am today uh, a few years on. Um, we've, we've grown from having, um, you know, being an online blog site to now, um, running events, which you've attended, uh, which now, you know, we've done um, in several states in Australia, um, to, to running programs, working with the likes of Northern Territory Government as well around these issues and, and topics that impact the lives of Aussie men. And how did you come about? Um, why, why did you choose that, I guess, format for the delivery of it? Because obviously a lot of men's now there is anyway. There's quite a lot of movements in men's health, men's mental health groups that are mm. trying to promote similar things, but we all kind of do it in different ways. And I guess what what inspired you to flip it from the blog to sort of public events? Yeah, oh, look, I think it was um, what I was noticing with the blog site when I started, and I've, I think importantly to note that, you know, I kind of let it, grow its own legs, so to speak, you know. Um, so it started with with this blog site and I encourage guys to share their own stories. Um, and, and what I noticed people were really engaging in, in particular with stories around um, issues such as mental health, our lifestyle, um, work, uh, relationships, fatherhood, etc. Um, so because we had a couple of other categories and um, you know like travel and sport or whatever as well when it first started kind of knocked those off and and focused on you know what people were really engaging in but i thought you know if we're really and a big focus was on the social connection side of things mm. and so i thought we can't really talk about social connection and and not be you know encouraging it ourselves so it, it was to really bring people together to, to have those discussions, to hear from people with either a lived experience or from health professionals or professional athletes or business people um, on particular topics to, um, yeah, and then to kind of for them to engage in it at an event, maybe meet some other people, but also walk away and um, maybe continue those conversations outside of that event space and how did you because some of the speakers i've seen you had pretty um i say high profile i, I haven't known all of them because i'm not traditionally an aussie like i came yeah, yeah. 11 years ago but i looked up some of them also <laughs> and i knew some of the rugby players also and the sportsmen um how did you get in contact with them how did you connect with them and was it easy and yeah i, I think i've been really fortunate you know i think 
just like the work that you're doing, I think, um, you know, there's authenticity in, in what we're trying to achieve. It's we're very transparent. It's all and, and inclusive as well. We're not trying to be exclusive only to men or or to um, you know um, denigrate other genders or, or or speak. You know, it's all about the betterment of, like you were saying before. Um, I guess betterment of society, and we're starting with with that by improving the lives of Aussie men. So when you're kind of talking about that as a discussion, I think a lot of people uh, are really quite willing to get involved in, in, in the events that we do because there is, um, I guess, th there's a vested interest in there. So, yeah, we've been really quite fortunate. But for me, it's been a, a I've built some really fantastic relationships with some, you know, sports people like Ben Alexander from um, who played for the Wallabies, uh, B. Derbidge, who is a uh, former pro surfer who's based on the Gold Coast, uh, and a number of other guys as well. So um, been quite lucky, but I guess at the start it was just picking up the phone and kind of pitching and going, this is what it's about. Do you want to get involved? And, you know, I think being quite lucky to, to have some amazing people involved in, in the events that we run. And how did you find them? Uh, I guess I, I guess what would your tips to be? Because I've seen you sort of do the questions and yeah, very natural, engaging and done in a a way that I guess can help. I don't know. It seems to encourage them to open up. I guess what's your kind of tips or did you learn that to like get them to open up or how did it? Or were you just lucky that you asked the right questions and away they went? Did they find it awkward? You know. No, I think in you know. It, when I put on the MC hat for an event, you know, I think I'm nervous as all hell. That event that you, you went to in Sydney, like I remember walking in there and I was really nervous because it was a busy day and uh, and we walked in. I don't know. I don't know whether you were hot in there, but I was bloody hot. I looked. It was pretty warm. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about my man boobs before. <laughs> it's like this, this well of water under them, you know. Um, but uh, look, I think. I do a little bit of, of research on the guys that I that I speak with, um, but I, I I just have a real interest in people's stories uh, for the most part, and um, yeah, I guess it's just allowing people a space to speak, you know, just like you're doing now. I don't think there's um, anything really much to it. It's just having a, a an interest and um, coming from the, the right place you know i think when you're doing the work that we do um day in day out you know and engaging with the people that we engage with you tend to to know some of the questions and some of the, the themes and topics that you want to be able to touch on so i do give that some thought but for the most part you know sometimes um people's stories can take you down a route that you never expected which is quite cool mm -hmm. as well yeah the one um I went to the Steve Panels, the mm. Wake the um, Ward Green journalist, and I recognised his face from somewhere, but I didn't know him. I didn't know him instantly, and I thought, oh, I know this guy, and then I thought, well, I can't get my phone out now and Google and find out more. So I let him talk, and I, I was so I go back a step. My kind of thoughts before the event, I was naturally, I would say, sceptical, but I thought. There's some public profile people here or, you know, ex-public profile people. Are they going to give the usual party line about uh, mental health really important, you know, make sure you do this, make sure you do this. And I had already, I hadn't decided that or what would happen, but I naturally went going, oh, I'm not so sure, let's see what happens. And I was listening to his story and was blown away when he would just sitting there telling us about his experiences as a journalist and then when he's one of his good, I say good friends, but a friend that he'd worked with um, who was killed in the car in front of him on one of the uh, one of the sort of missions he went out on, I guess. And yeah, that, well, and just everything that came out of that, and he delivered it so well, and that's obviously he's been in the public eye, but he delivered it so authentically. I was just hooked, just stunned listening to him. So um, yeah, he had a great story. Yeah, and I think that's probably the beauty of it as well, that each speaker, you know, someone's going to be attracted to or get value out of, of each of the speakers. And I guess, you know, the general format that we run with um, with the events is that 
we have a health professional there um, to talk about, I guess, the, the psychoeducation side of things, uh, or if it's a, you know, more a physical health type discussion than uh, a performance coach or a, whatever that might be, along with, a, you know, that someone of notoriety or profile or someone with the lived experience. But, um, you know, I think at each event, and that event, you know, in particular was really quite special because, um, like you, Terry, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I knew Steve Pennells, but I didn't know Steve Pennells, yeah. you know, Steve Pennells, the um, the television reporter uh, who you'd see on, you know, Channel 7 on, uh, and whatever else. But then for him to talk about his experience in a, as a journalism and ex, uh, experiencing, um, you know, the mental health side of things and then talking about issues such as, um, you know, weight issues and, and having kind of been fat shamed on yes. you know, and such a on such a public forum or public arena you know you kind of go god that's going to take a hit you know as an individual no matter if you're a celebrity or not you know mm-hmm. someone to to put you on a website and tell everyone how fat you are you know <laughs> yeah. yeah incredible story i encourage anyone to go and um read about it because i didn't know that and seeing him now obviously lean as anything and you know i i was quite surprised by not not just the story but the fact that he kind of took it with uh some resilience and was probably hurt by it no doubt but turned it into something which was positive and that really blew me away and that was just one story obviously like i i was hooked listening to him um and he just he, he really took it surprised me and then once i was in listening to it so I guess for me it was that I mean that's one big story, but from the other events you've done, is there any other particular stories that were particularly hard hitting that you remember or some of the best ones at all? I think what I'm always blown away by is um because what I what I a big part of it, you know, and as you know, Terry, the one of the big challenges for blokes is um, that we tend to bottle things up, you know, and, and that was my own experience as a young fella growing up, is that I tended to, to, you know, oh, I thought that you had to, you know, not show emotions. So um, I really try and encourage people to, to I guess, come up with their, 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 their true selves and be a little bit vulnerable, which is hard to do in, a, in, in such a public kind of forum or public space like an event. Um, so I'm really kind of blown away and, and really quite proud of the fact that these speakers um, are leading with vulnerability like they are, you know. So to see someone like Billy Moore who spoke the other day um, at the online event, you know, he's a he's a rough and tough Queensland football player, you know, and, and from that era where, you know, men, you know, men are men and boys don't cry kind of stuff, that tough and toughen up princess era you know but mm-hmm. he's actually one of the most down to earth open um caring and, and vulnerable blokes that i've ever met you know and yes he's a tough football player but um for him to stand in a in a crowd full of people in a room full of people and, and just pour out and share his story the way that he he has done on a couple of occasions i really find that admirable you know and each of the speakers that that we have at our events um do bring that on on most occasions you know um yeah so there's real strength in that and i think that's probably one of the key things that you know in the work that that we're doing at blokepedia and the work that you're doing as well is that men and their their sons and young fellas who even are starting to engage are going hang on it's it's okay to to be vulnerable, it's okay to talk about your emotions and feelings. Whereas mm-hmm. probably when we grew up, um, that certainly wasn't the case. So that's probably the thing that I'm, yeah. Each speaker I can gain something from. I think you know, there's certainly been people along the way that I kind of go, oh, geez, you know. But that's <laughs> been that's been a, a learning experience for my part. So what I do yeah. the events is go, you know what, Blokepedia is about being real raw and real with with your story you know and of course i'm going to say you know if you don't want to talk about x y and z i'm not going to talk about it but for the most part the speakers are an open book you know so yeah. i think that 
the point about that. I'm I'm watching that when I was at that event and I can feel in awe of that person doing it and telling their story when people say the same to me when I'm told, and I don't know I'm doing that now because it's quite natural. And mm -hmm. I, I talk about it like once I did it and around 30 years old and start talking about it, I've never stopped. It's not that I'm out there saying all the time, this is my whole story, but if someone asks me now, I see no reason not to tell them. Mm. You know, if they, if they ask me, so there's a lot of curious questions I get still from work people, people I play football with, people, families, even some of my <laughs> family know less about me than some people I've just met, you know, which is mm. really interesting. And then the thing I notice now when I told someone at work, a younger guy was going through a few things, and he was still really curious. So he's asking me these questions. And I just went for a walk with him and told him a little bit my background, Mr. Perfect. And the change I saw in him just instantly from nervous, anxious, kind of panicking, didn't know what to expect, didn't know what I would think of it, you know. And he just kind of opened up a little bit. And man, the respect we had for each other after that, although brought us kind of together in a sense of since that day, man, like you you feel so much more human around these people. <laughs> like, you know, when they've had a shit day, you know, you can sense some things there, right? You can tell all these mm -hmm. signs. And I think that is like that permission thing, in a sense, having that. It's not said, but it's known. When you tell your story and you're listening and you're engaged, you're like, wow, this is okay. Like, there's, there's people there who seemingly have it all telling their story. Um, mm -hmm. And they're still here. And, you know, they're doing the best they can. So I think I got that from the events um, hugely, I guess. Um, and I, it's obviously been, well, I, I say a success, like it looks great from the outside. I think people say that to me. So a question I was going to have for you was, I get told, oh, it's raw. And it looks like you're getting all these people following what you're doing. And it looks like you're just winning at everything. And I don't think people see what goes on. Well, they don't, right? They're the same as mm -hmm. mental health. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. So yeah, yeah. Talk to me about, I guess, how you found it. Because I, I think I know you told me a little bit before that when you, you were in a, uh, a job or full-time job and then you were mm. going to make a transition and how have you found that on your own kind of well-being and health? And yes, it's rewarding to do this, mm. but what's the other side and like the real, I don't know, the real experience of setting up something which is for good, not for profit, you know, all these sort of things, or at least you know, uh, uh, social enterprise, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bloody tough, I think, yeah. you know, um, because, you know, I, the whole time, the whole time I've had I've had times where I've gone, well, what am I doing? You know, why am I doing it? Um, because, you know, you, you put so much in and at times it's for so little return, you know, like both financially and emotionally, you know, that you, you're taking time away from from your wife or your friends or whatever to um to to develop you know to prepare for events or to do stuff on online or whatever that might be and i think that's the same for probably most um businesses small businesses as well but um i think what i've learned and um is that it's really important to have those people to to turn to, to say it's bloody tough, you know. I think so often that we do tend to, you know, and, and you see it on social media and stuff all the time, that, and I kind of go, is that person really, you know, going that well, you know, because I I know for me that I've, I've had times where I've just gone, I just want to bloody hang up the boots and go and get a nine-to-five and and... and you know, do all that kind of stuff. But I think, um, and, and even as early as, you know, the last couple of weeks, to be honest, because, you know, this COVID stuff is certainly taking a hit on, on us as a business. It's it's changed the way we've had to operate. And, um, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's tough. But, you know, I think I've got to continually remind myself of why we do this, you know, and those individuals and the, the benefit that, that we that we are making to um, to society and and onto people's lives. So yeah, but certainly certainly had my struggles, and I think I'd probably be the first one to to put my hand up to say, you know, this is bloody tough. 
but I think you're right. You know, it's like a duck underwater kind of thing. You know, everything's good, but underwater, you're like, oh, holy crap! You know, kick, 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 and holy shit. Well, it's draining. Um, I think I've experienced that. I've, I, I think so. Even when I had my board meetings, I think even my board members, a couple of them are close to Matt, well, they're all mates now, but they can tell sometimes. I've had times where I've gone a year ago, oh, this thing just happened. Um, you know, we're not making impact. This is it. Rob. And I just beat myself up about it and I say, what's the point? Like, why don't I just, you know, hand over to someone else and away we go. And I've been very lucky that a lot of people just said, look, take, take a break. Really, don't worry. Like, this is not the end of the world if this didn't happen. Like, there's a lot more important things. Mm. But it is the baby that <laughs> you can't just let go. And there's yeah. times where I've said, I've been, I've been semi open about it, but I went, nah, I told the board I'm finished in six months. I'm glad to have a role in it from upstairs or whatever. Mm. But each time I've drawn back in because. I can sit when I get the one-on-ones with people, when I hear the stories, when someone just, you get the odd message out of nowhere from someone and, you know, people just through LinkedIn, through Facebook, whatever. And my husband, this, my brother, this, my son, this, my son came to a barbecue. My son watched this talk. My, you know, um, the podcast I did recently, someone messaged and said, oh, after listening to it, I went and got professional help. That's the stuff that I just draws me straight back here. It gives me the fuel again. And it, it doesn't last forever because you know, a thousand other things to worry about, especially mm. right now, finances and everything. Um, but I think being vocal about that is very important. Um, I'm lucky I get people asking me regularly, are you truly okay? There's probably only, truthfully though, we've got a long way to go, I think. We've got about, I've got maybe two people that will seriously sit me down, look me in the eye and go, like, what is going on? Mm. Are you, you're putting on this front again. Like what, you know? And I'll tell them then. I don't go all in, but I will tell them. So mm. I was gonna I was gonna say, how do you manage now then bloke Peter or not, like your own mental health? Um yeah. how do you manage it in a way or is it for you a day by day thing or yeah, how how do you manage it now? Um it, yeah, I guess there's a few things that I do that I make sure it's almost routine because it's really easy to you know to get caught up in it um but you know really important to get sleep um that's a big i love my sleep you know yeah. so, um and, and, and beck and i my wife are, are usually in bed really early in fact you know at nine o'clock i'm <laughs> keeping you up so like, this, this bastard's keeping me up <laughs> but um no so so sleep's a big one we go for a walk every every evening at the moment as well. Um, just you know, it doesn't need to be big, big but that kind of movement and exercise. Um, you know, can't go to the gym at the moment, but um, and the other one is just being able to offload on or have a discussion, I guess, more than anything with with, with my wife and just be real open and and talk about that, which is something that I've been really lucky to have is that in our relationship that we can actually um talk openly you know about everything that's going on and um and i probably haven't ever had that before in a relationship um, with it you know with a partner so you know to to marry someone and be living with someone and all, all that um and to have i guess that's such an important part of our relationship you know is something that I, I value yeah so they're probably the three things is having that one person to talk to um, and I've got a couple of mates that I can have a bit of a chat to and be a little bit more open with than, than normal as well. A bit of exercise and sleep as well. Uh, and I know, you know, you're talking about beers before and that's probably one of my big vices is I love love to have a, have a bit of a beer, but, uh, you know, a few beers. And I know that if I've had a few too many, that the next couple of days I'll just be out of sorts, you know. Yes. So, yeah, to the, to the point, even, you know, Get a bit down in in the dumps and you know a bit less motivated and stuff. So it's it's little things like watching watching that as well. Mm. And I think you know we had a brief chat about it before we came on. Um, mm. Alcohol is just one of those things that I think uh, my wife jokes about it and says, "Look, I like a, a good beer, right? Not I don't drink any of the weak piss stuff. Like I 
I'd rather get a nice stronger beer, like a good one, and I'll spend money on it to have a few at home. And I think this COVID thing is, it was almost like an excuse when it turned on. Yeah. Oh, okay, I can do that more now. And I convinced myself I could do that. So for four weeks, it, I had days off, but it was with dinner, oh, I had a beer, kids were in bed, oh, I had another one. Oh, actually, I actually am doing some work on the computer and I'm still working, I'm still productive, so to speak. And mm-hmm. I have another one and I just go, oh, that's another day gone off. And I'm typing this up at the end of the week in my recycling bin, I went to take out and I went, mm, maybe this isn't that great over the, the long haul. But I think my relationship long term with alcohol has never been never been a massive drinker per se. But mm. it was the thing that made me open up as an introvert when I was younger and led to probably not good mental health states, that's for sure. Mm. And it's something that is always intrinsically linked in some way to mental health. And I don't think it's clear cut. So uh, your well, I deliberately mentioned the Balta connection because yep. I noticed the events like Pedia mm. around conversation. They're normally in, uh, obviously not the online one, but normally in pubs or breweries or a license venue, whatever it may be. And mm. it's encouraged you have a drink, you know, or not, you don't have to, but you have a drink because you're watching people chat and stuff. How have you found, I guess, firstly, like, how did you make the sort of connection that great will get a partner that's, is it just because you personally like beer? <laughs> and then secondly, have you had any um, comments, criticism about having alcohol involved? Because our, our prelude is that we talked about it Mr. Perfect for a long time and we had some things that we were going to do just before COVID happened that would be linked to beer as well and mm-hmm. publicly linked to beer in a tasteful, yeah. responsible way. And it's always generated the biggest discussions at our board meetings but really healthy it's so good we can talk about it the way we talk mm. about it so I'm keen to hear your your thoughts on it yeah look I, I think um I, I guess first and foremost I guess for, for us to hold our events you know and, and for a blokeopedia event to take part it's about taking place in a place where guys feel comfortable and relaxed enough to um to engage in that conversation i think you know if we if we look at maybe um the way and the discussion around mental health to date you know by the community sector or whatever they held in community halls or school halls and that and yes. you know there's very much a focus on talking about mental illness and of course you're not going to go out and rock up to a community hall and talk about mental illness and depression on a wednesday or thursday night um you know, but it's about creating a safe environment. So, um, yeah, the the alcohol, obviously, or beer or whatever it is that people choose, yeah. choose that it's, it's about choice as well. You know, there's no, there's no one forcing beers down your throat or forcing alcohol. <laughs> there is alcohol at these venues for responsible adults, you know, to, to participate, uh, to, to purchase if they want. We certainly um, don't provide it free of charge as a, as a start. Um, so it's, you know, again, up to um, guest choice if they want it. But, um, yeah, I guess to talk about the relationship that we have with the venues that are, you know, craft brewery places or whatever it might be that host these events uh, and then the likes of Bolter as well, um, we're very much about having shared values and and. and I guess that that um, a brand alignment, so to speak, from a commercial point of view. Um, and so for for Bolter, they've got a real um, focus on community um, and looking after the, the, their community um, that you know of people that are men and women. Um, and during this time, during COVID, they really wanted to make sure that um, they are obviously supporting people and their emotional and social health so yeah i've probably had one or two comments in the last few years that it's uh, i've been told it's irresponsible that we have events at pubs um but again you know if i was running um aa meetings i'd probably rethink it but <laughs> we're, we're we're running um events for for adults um who you know, are responsible enough in my mind to to choose whether or not they are going to 
consume alcohol responsibly. I think, you know, and, you know, with all the events that we've run, um, there, there hasn't been any times that I've gone, oh, holy shit, that was a bad idea, you know? Of course. Um, of course. Yeah, and it, it's probably been a couple of times that I've had one or two too many. <laughs> but, um, for, yeah, look, for the most part, I think it, it does come down to choice and responsibility. And, um, yeah, I, I understand the discussion. I certainly do because even myself through my own experience and my own battles with, you know, with, with my mental health and stuff, I, probably the first place I turn to is, is, is alcohol, um, mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah... Look, when it when and if it does become an issue, um, then we can certainly revisit it. But um, mm -hmm. at the moment, you know, we're, we're we're talking to an audience that we want to engage in, yeah. engage with, which is guys who, yep, drink. You know, some of them drink beer. So I think it's you mentioned you know, choice, uh, and I'd say just being responsible that. The discussion we had around was really interesting. So it's two years ago when we first talked about um, which should, uh, the barbecues, right? So we're running these barbecues and the natural Aussie thing is bring a six pack, have a beer while you're having a sausage and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And we very quickly went, well, no, like we didn't explicitly say you couldn't, but then we kind of inferred you probably shouldn't in a very non like natty state way. Mm -hmm. And um, it's only ever happened once that, and luckily our chair was at the barbecue in near his house and he turned up just to see how it was going. And um, there was a guy there that clearly suffered addiction and he just came over to find out what it was about and he'd had a few too many, clearly. And like our chair, excellent guy, Gordon, he's just so, uh, he dealt with it just incredibly well, like just so with empathy and went over and just had a chat with the guy and said, look, it's fine, like you have a beer and stuff, but technically, like we're not supposed to do that, you know. And he just says, "Really great chat." And the guy was lovely about it, and ended up walking off and whatever. And I think at that point, we kind of said, "Let's pull this back here. Where did we start? Mm. Where did the conversations come from? Culturally, what what have we deemed as an acceptable place and a comfortable place to discuss uh, mental health?" And I said, "Well, the first place I told my mates was." I'd had two or three pints, like building up a bit of courage, and then said, well, like, by the way, I'm seeing a doctor. And then they sat there, and, okay, and then said, oh, by the way, I'm, I've seen someone who I am. <laughs> and before you knew it, it became, well, look, we have our board meetings, normally having a beer with it. We've had, um, at least at the start of them, we've had events where there's obviously alcohol there, um, and we certainly didn't want to become the nanny state of alcohol is bad you shouldn't do it yeah and thankfully same we haven't had many comments about it we've had a couple about maybe but um it is i and i'm very honest about it same as you from feeling a little about tight and i've come home from work or right now like <laughs> once the kids are in bed i'm grabbing i'm thinking about it straight away not you know going through a case but i'm thinking about if i have a beer that would just you know chill me out and um, yeah, it's a tricky one, real tricky one. But I, I get where I think that's what made it so appealing to me. What you're doing with Black Beer that could come along, have a beer, see it in a very relaxed kind of environment. Um, so for me, that was you know that was a winner. Yeah, so I was I was, I was keen to hear your thoughts on that because it's always an interesting one. Yeah, look, and it is the, the comments that we get quite a lot is that, oh, isn't this refreshing to actually come to an event like this where you can actually have a beer and and to, to engage with people um, in, in, in a bit more of a relaxed way. So, um, and it's not your, your black tie corporate kind of fundraising yes. charity stuff either. It's just natural. And I, I guess for me, the, the test is, is it something that I'd go to? And, um, yeah, because I'm not, you know... Um, at times the most especially when it comes to a midweek event you know lucky getting me out of the house so <laughs> um yeah so so for me to leave the house and to encourage others you know you at least want to have a little bit of fun you know if you're going to be leaving your kids for the night or for a couple of hours then you know at least be able to have a beer and a bit of a feed and, and a good chat and a laugh so yeah um, that's that's for me what it's all about and the best, I guess, the best conversations then you might have had with friends or family members or your wife, and 
what's what's your sort of suggestions of how best to have those conversations or those conversations that matter for your experiences? I think it's about finding those people that you that you can be open and be vulnerable with. You know, like there's for me, um, I've got those few people that I that I know I can have those discussions with. Um, you know, and, and I'm very lucky to have. A, 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 you know the support of my wife and some really close friends, and you know I'm lucky to to um, you know have a have a director of Locopedia that's a psychologist as well, so I get um, <laughs> I get free therapy. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, for me, it's about finding those people. You know, you don't have to be vulnerable with with everyone, but it's about finding those people that you can actually have those discussions with and go that little bit deeper, um, you know, and, I, yeah, I, I, I think, I, I, yeah, I, I totally encourage that rather than trying to tell people to go and share their stuff with everyone because, you know, some mm. people you just won't want to tell, you know, there's workplaces mm. that you, you won't feel safe to do so, that you you might feel that your, your employment's at risk by sharing that you, you're going through some, some stuff, you know, so... Mm. And I totally get that, but you also, um, but you do need those people that, when times are tough, that you can kind of take the lid off the bottle and let that stuff out every now and again. Mm. I think that's that. Probably what I was talking about that kind of implicit permission to do so, mm. and it's tricky because I think we're in this stage right now where, over the last few years, it's been normalised to an extent that we can talk about mental health, and there's this kind of maybe you know maybe i see it more in the corporate world i spend a lot of time on linkedin and like posts about mental health and things now obviously a lot more common mm. however it's almost we're at this strange place where it's comfortable to do it or you're encouraged that you should or yeah don't worry we're behind it like we're you know we're so pro mental health and blah blah blah, blah. but we're not at a stage where i think um, and i don't think ever we maybe should be like you mentioned it's not safe to just suddenly tell your story to everyone and just come out with it in, you know, pre some professional help or, or not. Like, I really think it's a tricky, sensitive, um, yeah, it's a sensitive way to do it. I chose it with close to two mates who, who kind of over three years had seen me allude to stuff or post something on Facebook about mental health and they just never could ask the proper question. And one of them said to me, Oh, so I noticed you post a bit about mental health and your Facebook page and <laughs> we're able to be here. And I was like, well, actually, and then it just flowed. And it was nice and it was comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I highly, um, yeah, just wanted to sort of say, yeah, I agree 100% with that point. Find the right people um, mm -hmm. and don't be in a rush to blow everything out because I really think it can be unsafe for some. I'm, and not everyone's prepared for it. Um, not everyone's comfortable uh, with, with dealing with it, you know. Mm. And, and that's the other part, you know, I think for guys in particular, you know, when, when it comes to, you know, uh, having our mates or our partners or colleagues or whoever it might be, um, share that stuff. If, if, you know, if, if you know, they've opened up to us that we don't actually, a lot of people don't have the skills or even the, the, the knowledge to go, shit, what do I do, you know, because... Um, our natural reaction as blokes is to go, oh, she'll be right, or, or try have a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go and have a beer and we'll forget about it, or, you know, we'll drown our sorrows, or, or we'll try and fix it, you know. But I think, yeah. um, and, and the best part of advice, and I think that's probably what's missing from the discussion, is to go, well, yeah, it's okay to encourage people to, and to encourage people to open up, but if, if their fear is around, well, what's Terry going to say if I open up to Terry, you know, my best mate or whatever, and, and he goes, oh, she'll be right, mate, then there's that missed opportunity and then the lid goes back on the bottle and, you know, never to be talked about again. But if, if Terry has the skills to to go, well, I'm not going to fix it, but I'm going to ask just questions to, to draw out what it is and, and it's simple, it's really simple stuff, but and you can't really fuck it up too much. Um, yeah. You know, but I think it's really important just to kind of draw it out with some considered questions rather than go, oh, God, God, you know, he's he's talking about his feelings to me. This 
freaking weirdo. Um, but I think that's the part of the education that we're really missing at the moment as well. And I think, you know, from from some of the work that we do as well with our programs and, um, and, and workshops, and that is giving people the tools to kind of go, well, what, how do you have a conversation that matters? Yeah. And, and, but also how can you, if you don't want to, what are other ways to manage your mental health outside of that conversation piece? So that's what I was going to ask. So you do the, obviously, the online events and it's probably, maybe it's good or bad timing because of what's happened, but, you know, maybe more people at home accessing it, but you released um, some online workshops and modules. Is that right? Um, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so um, just prior to COVID, I think um, the night of, of that event down in Sydney, we kind of had, had a bit of a launch of our um, online learning um resources which is the men's health and wellbeing toolkit um so we developed those in partnership with a organization called go one um so they're a brizzy based organization that has the the world's largest library of online learning so we were really fortunate to have met them and for for them to say hey we haven't really got anything for men's health and so this um we got to work at, um, myself and clive and and a bunch of other people to um, to develop the, this online learning resources for men. So uh, we focus on five key areas with with that resource, which is um, fatherhood, mental health, dealing with change, lifestyle, and social connections. So we kind of, um, you know, in, in our research that we did and and through the work that Clive does as psychologists, kind of identified some of the key areas that we needed to address address and look at things like the um the national men's health strategy as well to see well what is it that we kind of really need to to focus on and, and so some of those things were you yeah, social connection help seeking behaviors in blokes and then we really wanted to give a bit of an understanding of what mental health was so rather than just say oh you know this is what depression is this is what anxiety is to go well, what does good mental health look like as well? So yes. to, to give people that that understanding of, you know, the, the mental health continuum uh, where you can be thriving at one end and at the other end you've got your mental illnesses and uh, things like anxiety, depression, et cetera, as well. So, um, yeah, that's um, a resource that we're, um, you know, working with some community organisations and, um, and other corporates to to get to, to people as well. So it's exciting. Um, and then, yeah, we've had to um, pivot like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the buzzword at the moment. Yeah, yeah. The drink what is it like, you know, gin, gin companies selling hand sanitizer or seems yeah. everyone's in the hand sanitizer game at the moment. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, we, we, we missed that boat. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, we, we're obviously having to to look at other ways to to engage uh, workforces and uh, engage um, you know people in the work that we do. Uh, to be honest, you know, it's been a really you know you can look at stuff and go so shit. Everything's online now and blah blah blah. But you know, I think and some of the work that Clive does in change, you know, um, Dr. Clive Williams that, that I work with who um, is a psychologist, he, his whole work is his life's work of what, 35 years plus as a psychologist has been focused on how we deal with change. And one of the things that I'm really um, noticing at the moment is with change, we have to learn a polar opposite skill. And right now for a lot of people, that polar opposite skill is technology. Yes. And, and how to uh, connect with people um, in a different way. So whilst it's, it is, it's still crap, like let's be honest, it's still yeah. crap we, we're having yeah. this conversation. But to be honest, we've known each other for a couple of years now yeah. and and this is the first time I've had a proper conversation. Yeah, so true, very true. That's a plus. But, um, yeah, I think it's easy to look at the negatives with this kind of situation, but the positive is, we're all learning this new skill set of um, how to communicate with each other differently and how to connect, connect yeah. with each other diff differently. Yeah. No, I love that. And I think that's, yeah, you summarized that really good. I have days where I truly go, like, what the hell are we doing? Um, you know, what if this happens and we're never going to get back to doing the barbecues? And 
oh god i don't want to do another zoom thing and i do get those days and i think the the summary for me is look this is temporary in one sense but i think when we'll come out of it we were just discussing our board meeting that the continuum will be that we still do these trh on thursday night because it'd be interesting also we'll do the online barbecues because actually it serves a purpose that there might be someone in rural new south wales wherever it might be across the country who wouldn't have access to there's not a barbecue in every town there isn't a service in every town there isn't a med, you know a bloody psychologist in every town mm. um if, if they can get to something like that it's better than nothing so will we use it as a tool like as, as still part of our i don't know our toolbox mm. i guess as a service mm. but we are more than ready to get physically back to yeah engaging in person um and so like you just can't beat that right it's um you can't beat it it's 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 fine. Like we're learning. That's the positive. Um, but uh, the whole point of social connection is what we're all about. And I know you have a whole module on it. And it's what you mentioned as well. One of the reasons for Blackpedia. So looking forward to getting to, um, to get into another event. That's yeah. For sure. I think like you mentioned as well, because, you know, we've done a little bit of work in regional locations before and they are the, the blokes out there, the people out there are so often forgotten and they're, yeah, they don't get the resources that we are able to benefit from in these, um, you know, in these big cities or even some of the bigger towns. So I think for them, this has been a bit of a blessing to go, oh, it's about bloody time of you know, <laughs> giving out a way to, to, to be able to connect with us because Definitely. people that have been screaming out for stuff for, for years, you know, and now all of a sudden we've all discovered Zoom and, you know, Facebook Live or whatever it is that, whatever medium then we're able to kind of bring these people in and, and hear their voices as well so yeah another plus so yeah do keep doing the um trh things mate definitely and um what's next for blokepedia then what's the uh i don't pending i guess restrictions on everything and restrictions being lifted or whatnot mm. are you have you got any events coming up what's the what's the next few months looking like uh, oh look, no, no, no face-to-face events planned at the moment. I think we'll just play that by year. I think um, have got it on my radar that you know people are going to want to be more connected than ever. Um, and going back to that conversation that we had about events in pubs and clubs, I think it's going to be more important than ever that that, yes. that we actually rebuild some of these communities through getting people into those places. So. Um, I'd love to be able to to do something that we can actually run a series or a, you know a road show through some of these towns because we're forgetting as well that um, we were looking at de- delivering something in some of these fire affected communities of um, course. Yeah. you know and so love to be able to get through those places and you know get get a bit of a crew together and and uh, take the conversations at matter events and some workshops to these places. But, yeah, look, I think being very flexible in a way or, um, yeah, I haven't committed to anything, um, you know, hugely. Uh, it's just been kind of seeing seeing what's happening. But, yeah, I think definitely there's still that, that fire in my belly to, to, to keep going with what we're doing. And, um, yeah, like you, I think we'll... We'll look at some um, um, continuous online s- solutions as well. And I think we get comments already now after the online barbecues for people who first come or we're getting comments like, oh, well, when this ends, like, are you going to have a barbecue here? So, and already um, not to put down on it whatsoever, but, you know, we're trying to be really optimistic right at the moment, but I'm also acutely aware of the chats that go on in some of our, we have locational chats now instead of the online barbecue. And then we have the national online barbecue on the Sunday. And I keep an eye on those chats, see the sort of supportive messages. But I also see the stuff that, you know, it's not a crisis service, but we see the people that are doing it tough and they're saying, well, actually, I wish I could come and meet up with you guys on the weekend or I could do this. And just for that simple, yeah, they're in a moment there where they need a bit of support. And it might be just to listen to others. It might be just that or just to go. So we're very keen to, yeah, see this all be done with <laughs> very, uh, very soon but um how, how can people find out more about uh, blackpedia um oh they could um visit our website 
um, sign up to the mailing list there, which is www.blokepedia.com, or uh, we're on um, Facebook from time to time. That's probably something I need to get better at. <laughs> Facebook page. Um, yeah and linkedin as well and instagram so yeah but uh probably the best thing to do is uh if you want to get in touch with the events and, and find out a bit more about the work we do is visit the um website amazing and um last and not least uh what would be your sort of final words i guess of i hate saying advice but um suggestions for uh for men to connect suggestions for men to connect i think going back to what i said before i think yeah. you know fi finding people that you're comfortable with you know and, and also finding i think i said to to carl uh, from bloke psychology yeah. uh, earlier this week i think it's about finding what works for you as well like if it's if it's going to the gym then you know and finding you know a community or people that you you know like-minded people then do that you know don't don't do something that's unnatural. If it's Mr. Perfect in a barbecue, then, then you know, go do that. But I guess, um, yeah, find what works for you. But, you know, if you do need professional help, like a psychologist or, or, or counsellor or whatever, and you have a shitty experience in the first time, then don't give up yes. on that, you know, and to continue finding someone that you can connect with, you know, properly with that as well. Amazing. Yeah, I've been. It's been a theme of mine recently. That's just coming up almost on the daily at the moment um, about the little work persistence and with the support of the right people and the encouragement, uh, even just from us as groups to people who might not know us personally, can only urge that and know that we'll be there to sort of for the debrief or the the social connection. But there is a huge part there that we're um, we'll be there for that. But we can't do it all. But man, it's important. It's really, really important to have um, to do what's right for you. So, yeah. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time, mate. Better let you get to bed. I oh, know. Uh, yeah. I will share this across all our socials tomorrow as well, and it'll be on YouTube as well. So, I'll send out the link for people to watch back. But um, yeah, once again, thanks, mate. Um, hope everyone checks out Blokepedia. I'll be seeing a lot more of them. Um, I've learned a lot tonight, and um, I'm sure uh, we'll chat in future. I've just had in our board meeting. Uh, a couple of the guys said, you know this Blokepedia thing? I was like, yeah, I know the guy. <laughs> they were like, we should do more with him. Like, I was like, yeah, it's so awesome. we will be. <laughs> awesome, man. That sounds great. Yeah. All right. Pleasure, mate. Take care. Good on you, Terry. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye.